Good evening and welcome to the Carnegie Town Hall. This meeting of the City Council will begin in a few moments. The City Council meets on the first, second, and third Tuesday of each month at 7 p.m. and serves as the City's policymaking and legislative body. Each meeting is governed by Robert's Rule of Order unless those guidelines conflict with City Ordinance or Charter. City Council meetings offer an opportunity for citizens to speak directly to their elected representatives. Those in attendance are invited to address the Council during the public input segment at the beginning of the agenda. At that time, any issue that is not subject to formal action later in the agenda can be addressed. Testimony that concerns a resolution or an ordinance's second reading is only allowed when those specific agenda items are being addressed by the Council. When addressing the Council, citizens should speak directly into the microphones at the podium and state their names for the record after being recognized by the Chair. To accommodate and respect all viewpoints, citizen comments are limited by ordinance to no more than five minutes each. Comments should be respectful and focused on providing new information that will benefit the Council's deliberative process. By City Ordinance, all remarks must be addressed to the City Council as a body and not to any City Council member, including the Mayor. The Chair reserves the right to limit the number of speakers. City Council meetings are broadcast live on CityLink and online at SiouxFalls.org. Information regarding the City Council, its committees, meetings, briefings, and members is available by visiting SiouxFalls.org slash council or by calling the Council office at 605-367-8085. Thank you for your interest in Sioux Falls City Government. Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to tonight's City Council meeting. It is Tuesday, May 8th, and we're certainly pleased to have you here with us uh, tonight in person. And for those of you that are watching at home, thank you as well for, for joining us. We're going to start our City Council meeting like we always do, and we'd like to introduce you to your City Council. Council Member Staley? Here. Erickson? Here. Erpenbach? Here. Kylie? Here. Neitzert? Here. Rolfing? Here. Selberg? Here. Starr? Here. Mayor Huther. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilor, thanks so much for being here. Uh, really, really appreciate your, your service, uh, as, as always. In our great city uh, called Sioux Falls, South Dakota, we start our city council meetings with an invocation. Uh, it's a special part of, of, our, of our meeting, of our proceedings, and uh, we are very, very blessed to have um, uh, outgoing city councilor Rex Rolfing, a uh, man who is uh, given at the, at the highest level. And he is going to lead us in an invocation tonight, uh, that, that prayer, that blessing. What we'd ask is you please stand uh, for the counselor's uh, uh, invocation, and then please remain standing for our Pledge of Allegiance. Councilor Rolfing. About a uh, year and a half ago, I asked Tom Greco, in fact, it was longer than that, I guess, if I could do the invocation uh, the last meeting that I attended. And uh, I was put on the agenda, so I get to do this. This is a prayer that I've read over the last eight years every, before every one of these meetings to try and keep me focused and uh, keep my head on level and to help God help me along the way. So if you'd join me in prayer, I would appreciate it. Lord, help me today as I enter this time of service to be reminded of your presence and your guidance. I am your servant first and then the people of Sioux Falls. Help me to concentrate on the task ahead to show good judgment in the decisions I make, to listen more than I talk, respect all who are here and participate when the time is right, make me a peacemaker when needed and an advocate for good when appropriate. Forgive me when, I'm, when I was, am wrong and strengthen me on the right path. Help also my fellow counselors and the mayor in our deliberations today to do what is right and good for the people of Sioux Falls. In your name we pray, amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
Good evening. My name is Rick Kiley, Chair of the City Council. Tonight, two city councilors, Michelle Erpenbach and Rex Rolfing, and Mayor Mike Huther will be recognized as their elective terms come to a conclusion. We will begin by calling each to the floor to be formally recognized. Will Mayor Mike Huther please come forward. Mike Huther was elected mayor in 2010 and then re-elected in 2014. Mayor Huther has been involved in many boards and projects, in fact, too many to list, but we wish to great, uh, communicate to him that we greatly appreciate your hard work and dedication to the citizens of Sioux Falls. Mayor Huther, on behalf of the City Council, it's my honor to present you an encased American flag flown at City Hall from March 20th to 22nd, 2018. The inscription reads, in recognition of Mayor Mike Huther for his eight years of dedicated public service and commitment to the city of Sioux Falls and its citizens. Mayor Huther, thank you for your eight years of public service. Thank you. Will Councillor Rex Rolfing please come forward? Rex Rolfing was elected as the at-large city council member in 2010 and was re-elected in 2014. During his council tenure, he served as city council chair and vice chair, along with chairing the audit and land use committees and serving as a member of the fiscal committee, urbanized development commission, operations committee, and convention and visitor bureau business improvement district board of directors. Councilor Rolfing, let me first present you with a glass gavel in honor of your service as chair of the city council from 2016 and 2017. And finally, on behalf of the City Council, it's my honor to present you an encased American flag flown at Carnegie Town Hall from April 19th to 20th, 2018. The inscription reads, in recognition of Rex Rolfing for his eight years of dedicated public service and commitment to the City of Sioux Falls and its citizens. Councilor Rolfing, thank you for your eight years of service to the citizens of Sioux Falls. Will Councilor Michelle Erpenbach please come forward? Michelle Erpenbach was elected as the Central District City Council member in 2010 and was re-elected in 2014. During her council tenure, she served as city council chair and vice chair, along with chairing the Fiscal and Operations Committee. She also served on the Public Services Committee, Audit Committee, Metro Management Council, 
Siouxland Heritage Museum Board, South Dakota Municipal League Board, Urbanized Development Commission, Intergovernmental Board, and for six years, the Homeless Advisory Board. <coughs> Council Erpenbach, first let me present you with a glass gavel in honor of your service as chair of our Sioux Falls City Council and vice chair as well, 2012-2013. And finally, on behalf of the City Council, it's my honor to present you an encased American flag flown at Carnegie Town Hall from April 10th to 11th, 2018. The inscription reads, in recognition of Michelle Erpenbach for her eight years of dedicated public service and commitment to the city of Sioux Falls and its citizens. Councilor Erpenbach, thank you for your eight years of public service. Council Chair, uh, Council Vice Chair, uh, Councilors, thank you so much uh, for those wonderful words and, and certainly uh, um, these flags, we, we certainly appreciate it. I now am going to uh, turn it over to uh, Councilor Rex Rolfing. Uh, Councilor Rolfing. I spent a bit of time putting a little talk together here, so I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it because it's from the heart and it's hard to not say some things. First thing I wanna do is say thank you to the people of Sioux Falls for allowing me the privilege of serving you for the last eight years. When, I, when we were newbies starting in 2010, we had some bumpy roads to work through, but we did it. We did it by coming uh, to respect each other and setting some new boundaries and always doing what we felt was the right thing for the citizens of Sioux Falls. I'm proud of what we've been, what we've been able to accomplish during my tenure and hope you are too. Three words kept popping into my mind when I was putting this together. They were prizes, people, and problems. Let's look at all of them. Prizes. It's hard to name all the prizes uh, that this council has produced along with the administration over the last eight years. I'm not even gonna go into those because I, I, I have them all written down here, but the mayor's done such a great job of putting the top 10 and all that together uh, in the last bit. Um, I'm, you guys know what they are. Um, not all of them are, are flashy. Not all of them are like the event center, that kind of thing but some of them are really, really minute things that will make this city a much better place in the long run. So I'm gonna skip on to people. People are what makes the city great and what makes it run. Not only the people who are employed by the city, but those who live here too. Are you aware that we're running Sioux Falls with the same number of employees per 10,000 population than we were eight years ago? The same, think about that, and we've grown tremendously. Well, we, uh, and we're well below some of the, our sister, sister cities around the region. Sioux Falls runs pretty doggone well. And thank you to all, your, all the employees for your hard work and your pride in Sioux Falls. I'd be remiss if I didn't thank former councilors Brown and Jamison, Aguilar, Entman, Karski, Litz, Anderson, and Staggers, and both Lincoln and Minnehaha County Commissions also. It's been a pleasure serving with them one dream I did not get accomplished and that I hope the new mayor will uh, take a look at is um, collaborating more and more with them so that uh, we don't overlap and do things double. Our staff at Carnegie Hall. 
What a great staff. Tamara Jorgensen, Denise Tucker, Tom Greco, Dave Brixler, Jim David, along with Kim Schroeder, Ashley Vandenberg, and Abby Vandelate. We have a wonderful and talented staff that makes our lives much easier, and I thank all of them for being doing a great job over these years. Now we get to the, ma the mayor himself and talk a little bit about him. I don't know what you did, but you put together one of the most talented bunch of directors anyone could have imagined. They've made you and us look good over the last eight years, and I thank them all for what they do to make Sioux Falls the great place that it is. Then coming to the, to the mayor himself, we've not always agreed on a number of issues, but most of the time we, were, we had pushed Sioux Falls into the 21st century uh, in a responsible manner. Our legacy will not be five or 10 years from now. Our legacy is gonna be 20 years from now, 30 years from now, when people realize what a great job of long-term planning we did. Thank you for your leadership and your friendship. Problems. Without problems, we wouldn't be able to make uh, needed changes to develop solutions that do and will make Sioux Falls an even better place. It's important to find solutions because that's what makes us grow. There are times that some would like to hold our city back, do nothing, stay static. But I'm reminded of the famous quote that says, if you're not growing, you're dying. I would challenge the next council to keep moving forward in a positive manner with a good of Sioux Falls utmost in their minds and hearts. There are some special concerns that need to be addressed. Things like transportation, water. I keep asking Mark Cotter, where's, the next, where's our next water supply coming from? Slip Up Creek didn't work, but maybe we have to build our own pipeline to the, to the, uh, Luce, or to the Missouri River. I don't know. Infrastructure, as we grow, it's keeping up with that is gonna be a major concern. Annexation, bringing areas uh, around, almost uh, surrounded or, or surrounded to the city into the equal and equitable and fair basis and uh, into the city. That's gonna be for the next administration to tackle and that's gonna be a tough one, Paul. It's gonna be a tough one. So I urge you, or these are just a few of the things that uh, I think we need to look at uh, in the next few years. And I urge you to consider these and other uh, areas of resolution, remembering that doing the right thing sometimes is hard, but it's still the right thing to do. Sometimes unelected and some irresponsible people attempt to take power away from those that are duly elected by the majority of voters and um, who are there to make informed decisions. The tail should not wag the dog. That's all that I have other than to thank my wife Margie, my daughter Tiffany and my son TG and his wife Jenna and my three grandsons, Miles, Gage and Graham. Are they a joy or are they a joy? They put, uh, they put up with me for the last eight years and I thank them for their support. So thank you Sioux Falls. It's been a great eight years and I look forward to serving you again in the future. God bless you all. Thank you. Councilor Rolfing, thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate that. Uh, Council, now I'm gonna move on to the consent agenda. Uh, any motions, changes to that? Move approval. Second. Council Chair Kyle has made a motion to approve our consent agenda, seconded by Councilor uh, Rolfing. Uh, any discussion? A roll call vote, please. Council Member Staley? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. Starr? Yes. Thank you, Council. That is passed eight to zero. Our regular agenda tonight. Any changes to that? Move to approve, Erpenbach. Second. Council Erpenbach made a motion to approve our regular agenda tonight, seconded by Council Chair Kylie. Uh, a roll call vote, please. Council Member Staley? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. Starr? Yes. Councilors, thank you. That has also passed eight to zero. Folks, again, welcome to tonight's city council meeting. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we certainly appreciate it. This is an opportunity for you to engage the council on really any topic uh, that is of interest to you. If it is an item that's later on on the agenda, please, if you wouldn't mind just holding your comments till, till that time. Uh, really, just a, a couple of things. Please introduce yourself to the people of our town. Uh, that is important. Uh, this council would like you to keep your comments to five minutes or less, please. And uh, we would ask, um, as you're making your comments, please address this council as a, as a body, as a whole. 
uh, versus speaking individually about uh, or to somebody. Uh, folks, if there's anybody in the audience who'd like to engage the council, please just come forward. Welcome. Uh, my name is Dana Lowski, and I'm a citizen of Sioux Falls, and I uh, represent Friends of the Big Sioux River. And my reason for speaking tonight to, to the council and to, to the mayor and uh, mayor-elect is uh, about a, an agropore, uh, which is a cheese plant, uh, which will be expanding up in uh, Lake Norton, uh, South Dakota, which the expansion in itself is a good thing. Is a, is a good thing. But they will be discharging 2 million gallons daily of nitrate-laden la uh, water down the Big Sioux, uh, which will come, as we know, Plumbing uh, 101, everything flows downstream, so will end up here in Sioux Falls. Uh, and we have invested, the city of Sioux Falls has invested millions of dollars in, to try and restore the water quality of the Big Sioux River. I know our businesses have invested uh, very heavily along the Big Sioux River in the future of our city. So I think it's, it's really, uh, uh, I wanted to bring it to the attention of the city council that this is something that may affect us and that the city may weigh in on it. There is commentary, uh, there is a permit that's been issued by the DNR. Uh, there are some reasons to oppose it. Uh, you have to, this Friday, to issue a comment on it. So if the, uh, and I know we're in a change in administrations. And uh, so if there's some chance that somebody could, uh, from the city could look at this and put some uh, com commentary in and protect the waters and protect the investments that we've already made in the Big Sioux, uh, would be very, very appreciated, very timely. So thank you very much. Dana, thank you very much. Folks, anybody else? Thank you. Item four. Deferred from the City Council meeting of Tuesday, May 2nd, 2018 at 7 p.m. Item one, multimedia support, Carnegie Town Hall, broadcast equipment upgrade, provide equipment, labor supplies to install and program, AVI Systems, Inc., $290,792. Denise, thank you. Council Chair, did you want to address this item, uh, please? Or, Pat, did you, uh, Councilor Starr, did you yes, want to address absolutely. it? Yes, absolutely. Council, Councilor Starr, please. Absolutely, thank you. One of the things that we uh, did when we deferred this last week was to have an informational meeting this afternoon at four o'clock. I think the administration did a, a great job of answering our questions and explaining that uh, transparency is expensive at uh, almost $300,000 to make the upgrades. The unfortunate part is that I, I still have some concerns from where we were at and some of the questions that we were there. I, I really feel like we are getting a, it's an extravagant system and an extravagant form of upgrades. When you compare to what the county did uh, for less than $50,000 to broadcast, there are parts of the system that are worn out that do need upgrading, but the entire system and the entire package doesn't. One of the things that was quite concerning to me as we were talking this afternoon, and it kind of set off a light bulb moment for me, is that we're using franchise fees from the cable systems uh, to pay for this upgrade. And it just has the feel of a very Cadillac plus system that we're bringing forward. The other is, is that it doesn't address the immediate needs and the problems that we've heard, not only from my point of view, but from the citizens of Sioux Falls. It doesn't address the, the, the ability to um, watch the council broadcast from uh, whether a cell phone, a mobile device. It doesn't fix the problems in the, uh, if we want to use uh, the overflow room for a working session so that we can record those uh, things seemed like one of those things that would be a very simple fix was to uh, take the uh, cameras and some of the system that we're removing um, and use it to film events um, and be able to broadcast things that were going on in the in the overflow room again if it was a uh, a working session or other boards and uh, commissions having a chance to uh, to record for posterity and for people who aren't able to do that the other is that uh, um, the analytics. Uh, when this first uh, came on the agenda, I asked uh, for information about how, how many people watch our uh, weekly event. And I get stopped all the time and of all the people who have a chance to watch and do that each week. Um, but I asked for something as simple as how many clicks, how many people attend our website. And I was told this afternoon that they just didn't have it and it was too complicated to get. And we don't get the information from the cable uh, stations. So I don't know if anybody even asked for it other than starting the process. So again, 
not a deciding factor, but certainly something that'd be simple to find out how many people are on our website each week that are watching uh, our broadcast from our website at least. We may, you know, again, you have to, to speculate and maybe forecast some of the other numbers. But again, this is an extravagance that we're fixing an entire system where some upgrades to some things that are worn out, we could fix for considerably less than $300,000 or the 290,000. Thank you. You're welcome. Council, any, would anybody like to make a motion on this? Move item? to approve. Second, Erpenbach. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Rolfing's made a motion to approve this item. Second by uh, <coughs> Councilor uh, Erpenbach. Thank you. Any further discussion? A roll call vote, please. Council Member Staley? No. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. Starr? No. Uh, that is passed six to two, item five. New 2017-18 retail malt beverage license for Julie Foltz Log Cabin, 1515 West Burnside Avenue, pending conditional use permit, 8315-2018, approval on May 3rd, 2018. Planning Commission recommends approval, six to zero. Item six, request to include video lottery terminals with the new 2017-18 retail malt beverage license for Julia Foltz Log Cabin, 1515 West Burnside Avenue, pending conditional use permit, 8315-2018, approval on May 3rd, 2018. Planning Commission recommends approval, six to nothing. Thank you, Jamie. Good evening, Jamie Palmer with licensing. I don't have anything to add other than um, I was relayed by the planning um, department that there were 12 to 15 citizens in support of this item at the planning commission. So I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, councilors. Move to approve Erickson. Second, Selberg. Council Vice Chair Erickson has made a motion to approve these items. Seconded by Councilor Selberg. A roll call vote, please. Council Member Staley? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erbenbach? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. Starr? Yes. Thank you. That is passed eight to zero. Item number seven. Second reading, an ordinance of the city of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, amending the code of ordinances of the city by amending chapter 51, utility rates and charges pertaining to water customers outside the city of Sioux Falls. Good evening, uh, Mayor and City Council. Uh, my name is Nick Borns. I'm the Principal Engineer for Water and Light and Power here at the City of Sioux Falls. Um, I'm here tonight asking for uh, support in uh, amending Ordinance 51.054, uh, uh, rates inside city limits. Um, I was here last week and uh, gave a full presentation on this topic. Um, essentially, uh, this uh, uh, topic includes adding six properties areas A and B from the exhibit um, along the Ellis Road corridor to ordinance 51.054. Um, previously, city staff met with Minnehaha Community Water Corporation uh, to uh, devise a solution to um, eliminate the water main for uh, Minnehaha Community Water Corporation. Um, we're doing construction of Ellis Road from 41st Street to 12th Street. Um, in order to avoid a redundant uh, water main along this corridor, uh, we came up with a solution to, uh, to try to uh, eliminate that uh, redundancy. Um, in discussions with uh, city staff and uh, Minnehaha Community Water Corporation, we felt there was uh, um, benefits to both parties, and uh, we felt we were able to uh, accomplish this with uh, minimal impact to the customers. Um, with that, I guess I would ask if there are any questions. Nick, thank you very much for being here tonight. Absolutely. Folks, this is a second reading, so you do have the opportunity to engage the council on this topic. Would anybody be interested? Councilors? Move approval, Rolfing. Second, Selberg. Thank you. Councilor Rolfing has made a motion to approve this item. Second by Councilor Selberg. If there's no discussion, a roll call vote, please. Council Member Staley? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. Starr? Yes. Thank you. That is passed eight to zero. Item eight. 
Second, reading an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, authorizing the joint powers agreement with the City of T for use of the Sioux Falls Regional Wastewater <coughs> System. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. Trent Lubers with the Office of Public Works. Uh, this item represents uh, the City of T's long-term planning uh, for wastewater. The City of T actually uh, looked at their wastewater options and looking at their wastewater options decided to connect to the regional system. Uh, this agreement allows T to enter into a, a contract with the City of Sioux Falls for regional wastewater and allows them to plan and design their system, secure funding over the next few years before they would connect to the system. Their intent is to use their existing pond system as long as it serves uh, the, city of, or the City of T. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Trent, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, folks, again, a second reading. Did anybody want to engage the council on this topic? Councilors? Move to approve Erickson. Second. Councilor Vice Chair Erickson has been a motion to approve uh, this item. Seconded by Council Chair Kiley. A roll call, please. Council Member Staley? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Kiley? Yes. Neitzer? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. Starr? Yes. That has passed 8 to 0. Thank you. Item 9. Second reading, an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, amending the Code of Ordinances of the City by amending Chapter 124, Transportation Services, Subchapter General Provisions to allow cash tips to be accepted by transportation network com company drivers. Mr. Mayor. Y yes, Councilor Neisert. Thank you. Uh, I've brought this uh, ordinance forward to uh, fix a very simple historical problem. A TNC, otherwise known as a transportation networking company, provides customers a ride for a fare in a personal vehicle using an app-based model. Locally, that would be Lyft. Uber is the other well-known TNC. You pay your fare electronically with the app. Tips can also be paid electronically with an app. However, our city ordinance prohibits cash tipping. The Lyft and Uber terms of service do not prohibit cash tips. Talking to the original authors of this ordinance, this really came down to at the time when they were looking at Uber coming to town. Uber's terms of service did not allow cash tipping, and simply they were writing the ordinance to that would work with uh, that particular company. It was really nothing more than that. There wasn't a huge drive to prohibit cash tipping for some policy reason. In the ensuing years, that prohibition has been lifted, uh, pun intended, and uh, Lyft allows <laughs> tipping as well. So it's really a historical artifact in our ordinance. Uh, the question you have to ask is, why do we care? This should really be a business model decision, whichever, you know, if a company wants to take tips or, or you know, allow cash tips, it's, it, it really ought to be a, a business decision. We don't regulate tipping through a whole host of service businesses, hairdressers, servers, the guy who's moving my couch. It, it's just not an issue. So you have to ask yourself, what's a compelling government interest in, in regulating this? Uh, the other thing is enforcement is virtually impossible. It would have to be witnessed. It's really an unenforceable regulation with really no real compelling government interest. Lyft drivers would like to accept cash tips. They've told me that many times. Passengers coming into town don't understand why they can't tip here, but they can in other cities. And it really creates confusion and it puts drivers in a, a weird position. Lyft drivers are very supportive of this change. Uh, the passengers are as well. Lyft corporate is very supportive. So let's just leave this to the business and stay out of it. I'll be happy to answer any <coughs> questions. I appreciate your support. Thank you. Councilor Langsor, thank you. Appreciate it. Folks, a second reading. Did anybody want to engage the council? Welcome. Tom Ness from Harrisburg. And Matt Brinkman from T. Um, Mr. Mayor, distinguished city council members, and all the citizens present here, we are humbled to be able to represent the many Lyft drivers that we have in the Sioux Falls area. In October of last year, Lyft was a progressive addition into our community. After recognizing the need to communicate with other drivers, I created a Facebook group. This group was created to allow for the collaboration and open communication and effective communication between Lyft drivers in the Sioux Falls area. I figured it would be a, st a slow start, and uh, but soon we found that we have many active drivers that were wanting to join the group, and before too long, we had 350 registered Lyft drivers in Sioux Falls on this Facebook group. And we use this page to connect and work together to recognize the needs of our drivers, our passengers, and our community in shaping Lyft within the Sioux Falls market. Other South Dakota cities like Mitchell, Aberdeen, and Rapid City have created similar groups, and we have modeled off of each other with the same goals in mind. 
have we as, as we have monitored the City Council's actions regarding the suggested changes to the City Ordinance, we have been very grateful with the effort that has been put forth and the action to date. This proposed amendment has been strongly supported within our group. Using the Facebook page, we conducted a poll to determine those in the group that favor this proposed amendment. We received a total of 72 votes, and we found that 71 to 1 in favor of allowing us to accept voluntary monetary tips from our passengers. This is a 98.6% approval rating from those that took the poll. We urge you today to allow us to have a free market just as other business models have in this community. The city should not dictate who can accept cash tips. There is not governmental control and interference towards wait staff at a local restaurant, movers with a moving company, hairdressers at a salon, or taxi operators with a taxi company. We do believe that the ordinance was written in good faith towards compliance with the best business practices of our great community. Unfortunately, this ordinance, as it currently reads, does more regulation than is needed. The lift terms of service does not ban tipping, and tipping is widely accepted in almost every single market that lift has reached. In fact, Lyft encourages passengers to tip their drivers. Tipping is a practiced social custom in the United States in many different occupational fields. Tipping, by definition, is voluntary, and it's completely at the discretion of the customer. What we see from our vantage point is that drivers pay a lot to operate their vehicle, and they make very much less than the fee the passengers pay for the ride to maintain their vehicles. Tips are a great way to offset these costs, allow customers and drivers to share their appreciation of the service we provide and make driving somewhat worthwhile. Even though the phone app does allow passengers to tip, often the passengers have expressed that they would prefer the satisfaction providing a cash tip to the driver. Other times, as they leave the vehicle and go about their business, they will intend on tipping later and simply forget. It is our goal to improve customer satisfaction. Although tips may not be a perfect way to judge satisfaction, what they do provide us with is a value that we can use to measure against our customer satisfaction changes. If we employ certain things to try to increase tips and tips go up, it may be a good indication that our strategies are working. By allowing us to accept cash tips, customers can have that immediate satisfaction and be able to express that satisfaction in person. We, on behalf of the Lyft community, strongly encourage you to consider passing this proposed amendment. Thank, thank you, you for your time. Matt, Tom, thank you as well. Folks, anybody else want to engage the council? Very good, councilors. Move approval, Knight, sir. And a motion to approve. Second, Selbrick. Has been seconded, uh, Councilor Selbrick. Thank you, Councilor Staley. Um, say, I, I just for Councilor Nicert, I've, I've got a question, um, and the public may want to know about this too. Explain to us now how, uh, if, and how sales tax is, is taken in. I think maybe it's not. And then, how, how with these the cash answer. tips, Councilor Nicert, mm -hmm. the cash tips then are they going to be keeping track of that and reporting that as income? I'm going to take, the, thank you very much for the question. I'm going to take the last part first. As with any other service business, obviously you would be expected to follow federal law and report those tips and go to your tax advisor in terms of getting that done properly. So as far as compliance, that would be the same as anybody else in the uh, service business. Um, I think I will defer to Councillor Erickson who might have some better information about the sales tax issue. Yes, no, sure. okay. thank you, if you don't mind. Um, the sharing economy such as Airbnb and Lyft and those kind of services, um, oftentimes they're run on a platform. They don't have a physical presence and don't always have to remit the sales tax. But part of this with having Lyft coming into the community, um, they did not want to have the um, onerous of the every single driver to have a sales tax license. So Lyft voluntarily became licensed in the state of South Dakota and they remit and report sales tax for every single licensed driver and ride in South Dakota, such as Airbnb just signed on, um, I believe about a year ago, and they remit and report sales tax on behalf of all of the Airbnbs um, done within the state of South Dakota. There are a few other platforms that do not do this, which uh, Department of Revenue is currently working with some of those others in the sharing economy, wanting them to uh, remit uh, sales tax, otherwise it falls on that person. But such as this example, Lyft does report and remit sales tax for every single um, ride taken on their platform. Um, and that was part of the big deal is, is the issue was is, well, you, you are a service, you have to pay sales tax, you have to be licensed. So if I may, um, please. so then that means that just going technically with, with with the state of South Dakota, they're going to ha somehow have a way of keeping track 
of the tips that are coming from every Lyft driver. Uh, they don't have to pay sales tax on tips? You do not pay sales tax on the tips, no, nope, you do not. You only pay sales tax on the, on the service, um, on the wages. And so the above and beyond, they are responsible for remitting um, that to their, their federal tax. For income they do, tax. For income they're, tax. They're each of those. And then how does that compare with, with, with our unfortunately dying inter enterprise of the regular taxi, the traditional taxi companies, when they get a cash tip, is it handled the same, or do, are they allowed to get cash tips? They are allowed to get cash tips, and it's and handled the exact same way that they would have to report that for their um, federal income taxes. And then their rides are also taxable. Um, some choose to charge sales tax above and beyond the ride, most included in their fare. So for example, my, my fare may be $20 from here, from point A to point B, and you back the tax out, um, depending on if that's the way they choose to do it, or you can charge sales tax above and beyond that service. And then they're within an umbrella as well, like Yellow Cab Company. They they have, do they have individuals submitting, or are they like the Lyft thing where it's one group? They, I believe they have their company pays sales tax for all of their drivers. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Neisser. I just want to thank uh, our Department of Revenue expert for backfilling for me. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've worked there, but I uh, kind of am a, a tax nerd a little bit and, and follow the changes that are made in our, stat, our state because they try to keep it simple, but it's very complicated at times as well. So um, I would just offer my support for this ordinance as well. When we did have the conversation, um, that was something that was in the model and, and with any law that passes, we should always be revisiting them for unintended consequences or enhancing those um, deregulating or whatever it is for whatever the service is. And so I appreciate this uh, ordinance being brought forward and I appreciate the Lyft community too. I've had many conversations with their group and things that they're doing out in the community as far as food drives and helping others. It's amazing what this community of people has been able to do. And really they, they have this bond and they care about really the service. And so I'm thankful for that as well. Um, and really uh, I'm thankful for the service and this ability to, to use this. So I'd ask for your approval as well. A. Rogovo, please. Council Member Staley? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Kiley? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. Starr? Yes. Councilor, thank you. That is passed. Eight to zero. Item 10. Second reading, an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, amending the Code of Ordinances of the City by amending Chapter 124, Transportation Services, Subchapter General Programs, provisions to allow business decals or markings on passenger service vehicles. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Councilor Neitzer. This is a, another transportation related ordinance that I've taken a look at. Um, we have an interesting service model here in the city of Sioux Falls called a passenger service vehicle. We have the vehicle for hire industry that provides rides for, for in, in various modes and one of them is the transportation networking companies. We have taxis, we have buses. One of them, though, is called the passenger service vehicle. It's not a taxi. It's not a limousine. It's typically an unmarked car or an SUV. It could be a luxury vehicle that's taking you in a Cadillac Escalade to the airport. The key part is that it is something that is flat rate, and it's by appointment. That is what a passenger service vehicle is. There are only about six or so registered in the city at this point, and in fact, that number is continuing to decline. The um, lift, uh, for all of its good per things, has been very disruptive to the market, and passenger service vehicles have been impacted, as are others. There are some historical reasons that signage was prohibited from being on these vehicles. Largely, it came down to a discussion about taxis who were feeling that the passenger service vehicles were pulling up to, let's say, the, the, the bars at closing time and, and de facto taking, taking hails. Passenger service vehicles are prohibited from taking hails. They have to be by appointment. You can't walk up to a passenger service vehicle. Only a taxi can take a street hail. So that prohib prohibition was put in uh, several years ago, and it was for that reason. Now, talking to the passenger service vehicle uh, companies, what they would tell you is that they were pulling up to pick somebody up because they had called for a flat rate ride. So that would be their position. Regardless, the industry has changed. The, the different industries are really 
truly fighting for survival. There's been uh, you know, a very dis big disruption in the industry, and I'm not here to say whether that's good or bad, but we have a new entry in the market, and so they've seen quite a bit of market share that has gone away. One of the things they would like to do is to be able to advertise on their vehicles. It's just another way to get their name out there, and so that is what uh, they are asking for. I've contacted as many as I could, and in so doing, I've found that actually party buses are a passenger service vehicle. So like we have a Sufu Cruise, it's just a bus that has uh, a marking on it, but they take you for a flat rate and uh, for, uh, you know, and by appointment. And you say, I wanna, you know, drive all of my friends around town tonight or whatever. So that's also one as well. So it's, it's just a, a matter of giving them just another option. And the other thing I would point out is there is no prohibition uh, for Lyft uh, drivers to have signage on their vehicles. In fact, there's one sitting in the audience right now that has signage on his vehicle. It is allowed by city ordinance. Taxis can have it as well. So I would call it also kind of leveling the playing field as it were. And this is another thing where, you know, do we, do we really want to be in the business of telling somebody whether they can have signage or not? The, there was a question that was brought up about should they be required to have permanent signage on their vehicles? And I thought it's, it's a very good question. Now, thinking it out, there's two reasons why I would say it should not be required. The first is barrier to entry. Um, we now have a way in which you can get very inexpensive decals, magnetic decals to put on your vehicles. And the other one is that this would allow you to have signage, it wouldn't require it. It wouldn't really make sense to let somebody have no signage whatsoever but then if they're gonna have signage, they have to put it on permanently because if the concern is that you might be a fly-by-night operation or doing what I would call a chameleon vehicle where you might do passenger service vehicle today and then do driver's ed tomorrow or whatever it may be. Um, if you have an unmarked passenger service vehicle, frankly, they could be doing that today. And I do know um, a few of those companies that are doing that multiple things right now. And uh, as another example, let's just take Lyft that we just talked about. Obviously, they're not just doing Lyft with their car. They're driving it to work. They're using it for their own thing. For all I know, they're using it for driver's ed. I don't know. And frankly, it, I, it, I really don't care as long as they're following the rules. So I would be happy to answer any questions. That's kind of the uh, upshot of this. And it, uh, I did have one person who was going to come and uh, something... Uh, came up for her and she just let me know a few hours ago. So I don't know that we have anybody here to speak on it, uh, which is unfortunate, but I would uh, appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Knight. So to folks again, a second reading, did anybody want to engage the council on this topic? Very good. Uh, council, any, any motions? Move approval, Knightsert. Second, Selber. Councilor Knightsert's made a motion to approve this item. Seconded by Councilor Knightsert. Or I'm sorry, Councilor uh, Selberg. Uh, a roll call vote, please. Council Member Staley? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. Starr? Yes. Council, that is passed. Eight to zero. Thank you. Item 11. A resolution of the City of Sioux Falls approving diagonal parking on 4th Street. Good evening, Council. Heath Hoftieser, Principal Traffic Engineer for the City of Sioux Falls. Um, I have tonight before you guys a resolution to approve diagonal parking on 4th Street. We've been working with, uh, um, with the county on trying to come up with some ways to increase parking around the Law Enforcement Center, the county campus in the downtown area. Um, it's one of the other things we did was on the Dakota Avenue loop into 5th Street, which is kind of um, in the south south of 4th Street a little bit. We put diagonal parking there. We'll be striping it early this summer. Um, this on 4th Street, basically we're looking at the area between Minnesota Avenue and Dakota Avenue on the south side of 4th Street, and the county with their jail expansion, they'll be um, indenting the, basically indenting the street, creating an area that's wide enough to allow for diagonal parking on 4th Street through that area. So um, any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you, Heath. Uh, did anybody in the audience want to speak to this uh, resolution? Uh, very good. Councilor Neisser. I was going to have a question, but I believe you just answered it, which was I didn't know how you were going to fit diagonal parking on that street. 
but or as part of their construction project to yep. basically the there'll be a realignment to the curb and yeah we were, we were looking at different um we were brainstorming different possibilities of um going to one ways with the one lane of parking and trying to squeeze diagonal parking in the biggest concern with that is the exits to the law enforcement center are right there and we want to make sure that go both that law enforcement can get out easily and go whichever direction they need to. So um, we worked with them and basically the indented area is what's gonna allow to increase parking, so. Great, move approval, Neitzert. Second, Rolfing. Councilor Neitzert's made a motion to approve this resolution. Say by Councilor Rolfing. Uh, a roll, oh, I'm actually, sorry, actually, Councilor Starr. can Star? I grab one more question? I'm sorry, I was a little bit slow. Um, Heath, in the downtown area, are we, would this be required to be uh, concrete or do they pave, do we pave some, or do we use blacktop in some of the streets downtown or do we require uh, concrete in the, the streets uh, in that area? You know, it's, it's fresh for traffic, I apologize. I believe concrete's what's planned for and um, in most cases that's what people, or that's what we almost always use for the diagonal parking. It's um, easier to maintain over time because it lasts a lot longer. Perfect, thank you. So. Any roll call, please. Council Member Staley? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. Starr? Yes. That has passed 8 to 0. Thank you, Council. Item 12. A resolution declaring the results of the City of Sioux Falls municipal runoff election held in the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, on Tuesday, the first day of May, 2018. Tom, good evening. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Uh, as mentioned, this is the purpose of this. You'll, you're meeting again to canvas the results, in this case, for the runoff election. I'll provide some information and then um, obviously urge your support of the resolution. Uh, so as you know, there was a runoff election held on May 1st, 2018, uh, the purpose of which was to elect one mayor and one central district council member. Tonight, you're meeting as the canvassing board and I'll report that candidates for the Office of Mayor and Central District Council member received the following votes. Paul Tenhenken, 20,869, and Jolene Letcher, 12,413. For the Office of Central District Council member, Zach DeBoer, 2,798, and Kurt Sale, 2,947. Therefore, it is resolved by the Council of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, that Paul Tenhenken received 62.7% of the votes cast at said election and is hereby declared elected to the office of mayor for a four-year term. That Kurt Sale received 51.3% of the votes cast at said election and is hereby declared elected to the office of council member for the central district for a four-year term. Subject to your questions, that is all I have. Tom, thank you very much, and uh, congratulations to Mayor-elect Tenneken, Councilor-elect Brecky, and Councilor-elect Sale. Appreciate it. Uh, um, and we do have uh, the Mayor-elect here in the audience. Uh, congratulations to you, Mayor, and, and I don't see the uh, Councilors-elect, but uh, uh, thank you. And all the candidates, thank you so much for your willingness to, to serve. We, we certainly uh, understand its, its value. Um, is there anybody in the audience who wanted to speak to this item? Very good. Councilors? Move I to approve. And I'll second. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Chair Kiley, thank you for that motion. Seconded by Councilor Rolfing. Uh, if there is no discussion, a roll call vote, please. Council Member Staley? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Kiley? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. Starr? Yes. Thank you, Council. That is passed 8 to 0. Uh, is there any new business? Mr. Mayor, yes, Councilor. may I have the privilege of uh, um, asking for Councilor Urban back that we uh, move and second the uh, adjournment? Uh, very good. I'll move it. And I will second. Very good. There has been a motion to adjourn this, uh, this final meeting of uh, uh, Councilor Rolfing and Councilor uh, Erpenbach. Thank you very much. Uh, I just wanted to relay it has certainly been a dream come true for me. I thank you. Uh, the rewards of public service are certainly great. Uh, they're incredible. And uh, Sioux Falls, thank you for blessing me. And city councilors, uh, I'll tell you, it's been a true honor and a privilege uh, to serve with you. Um, all those in favor say, saying uh, let's adjourn this final meeting, say aye. 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 Opposed? This meeting is adjourned, Sioux Falls. Make it a great night.